Okay, so we've done some of the word problems. What I want, and we've kind of exhausted the fractions and stuff like that. So what I want to look at next is I want to start taking a look at decimals. The key to decimals, just like the key to whole numbers, falls in our place values. So let's review our place values on the left side of the decimal just quickly. So this is the ones, the tens, the hundreds. I'm writing them out as numbers. The one thousands, the ten thousands, the hundred thousands, and so on. And what you notice with these place values is every time you move one to the right, numerically it's divided by ten. You lose a zero or however you want to look at it, but it's mathematically it's dividing by ten. From a thousand to a hundred, you divide by ten. From 100 to 10, you divide by 10. So as we keep going to the right, it makes sense that every time we move one more place over, we divide by 10. What's 1 divided by 10? All the fractions, 1 tenth. Divided by 10 again, 1 one hundredth. Divided by 10 again is 1 one thousandth, and 1 ten thousandth, and so on. First of all, this explains why there isn't a once place on the right side of the decimal. I get that question a lot. Why is there ones on the left side, not on the right side? Well, because you're dividing by 10. Every time you move over a place, there is no way to have a ones on the right side of the decimal. The second thing you'll notice, if you look at these place values, you might be thinking that they look suspiciously like fractions. Because that's all a decimal really is, is a short way of writing fractions that have denominators that are multiples of 10. Not, actually, not multiples, just powers of 10 even. So if I have point zero point three four as a decimal, what that is really saying is 34, and then the denominator of the fraction is the place value of this last digit. Under the 4 is the hundredths place, that is 34 hundredths. And it is that simple, that easy to convert a decimal into a fraction. Now as a fraction, we're not going to leave it as 34 over 100 because it can be reduced. Both well, 34 and 100 can be divided by 2 to give us 17 over 50. So if I have... 0 0.685. What is that going to become as a fraction? 685 over, and yes, this is tenths, hundredths, thousandths place. So it's over a thousand. And of course, that can be reduced by 5, which will give me 200 on bottom. 685 divided by 5 is. 137. Can that be reduced anymore? No, it can't. So 137 over 200. How does it change things if we run into something like this? That number in front of the decimal point. Yeah, that's our whole number. That 9 does do, doesn't do anything. It's just a 9. Just like we have mixed numbers with our fractions, we do have mixed numbers with our decimals. What's in front of the decimal point is the whole number, and what's after the decimal point is our pieces, like we have in the fraction. So now we got the point four six nine, which becomes 400, or 496, I should say, which becomes 496 over... Yeah, tenths, hundredths, thousandths again. By the way, a quick way to double check. One, two, three decimal places. One, two, three zeros in a denominator. Both of those can be reduced by two. So 248 over 500. All done? No. Divided by 2, 248 divided by 2 is 124 over 250. Now I'm looking like we divide by 2 again. 
62 over 125, and that ends the streak of dividing by 2. And that actually is it. So all done? No, what do we have to do? We have to bring the whole number into it. 9 and 62 over 125. So in your notes, I want you to try this one. Turn that into a fraction or mixed number. So we have the 14 as the whole number 4. We have 0 0.0625, which is going to be 625 over 10,000. Very good. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. Again, four decimal places, four zeros. Reduce by... 25 will work. 5 would have worked as well. So this is going to be 400 here. This is going to be what? 25. Still reduced by 25. Which is going to give us 1 16th. Very good. So 14 and 1 16th. What do you think? Not horrible? Okay. Now, going the other direction, turning a fraction into a decimal, not a whole lot more difficult. Now, I'm going to start out with one we all know. Three-fourths, of course, becomes what is a decimal? 0.75. We didn't know that. Of course, we could do our division. 3 divided by 4. And for right now, we would use our calculator to just punch that in and get the 0.75. So if I had a fraction like 5, 6, what would I divide to get the decimal? 5 divided by 6, which would give me 0 0.8333 3, 3, 3, and so on. In a little bit, we're going to look at dividing decimals, and then we'll actually divide those out by hand. But for right now, we're going to leave it at that. Okay, the next thing is what if I give you something like this? Um, let's say we do a calculation for a dimension and we get 0.711 inches. Now, in some cases we want it that exact. In other cases, we want it as a fraction, but not as a, a common fraction like 711 thousandths like that would be. Um, if we're doing any sort of woodworking or a lot of manufacturing applications, we want that to the nearest fra certain fraction of an inch. For example, we might want this to the nearest sixteenth of an inch. To do that, the first thing we have to do is make it into a fraction. Now, rather than making it 711 thousandths, which we could do, one way to do it is just make it 0.711 over 1. It's a fraction. You put it over 1. Obviously, it's not a proper fraction because we don't like having decimals in our fraction, but that's okay. Right now, the denominator of this fraction is 1. We want it to be 16. How do I change it to a 16? Times 16 on top and bottom. 1 times 16 is 16 ths. 0.711 times 16, 11.376. So what this is telling us right now is that this is between 11 sixteenths and 12 sixteenths. Which one is it closer to? Yeah, this is 0.3, which means it's closer to going down to the 11 than it is to going up to 12. So 11 sixteenths of an inch is what that is. Well, it's as closest to, I should say. Let's say I have 0 0.352 inches and I want it to the nearest 32nd of an inch. I can do the same thing. 
0.352 over 1. What do I have to do to that one? Times 32 now to make it into 30 seconds. So 0.352 times 32. 11.264. Now again, this is between 11.30 seconds and 12.30 seconds. Which one's it closer to? Yeah, it's 0.2, so it's closer to going down to the 11 than it is to going up to the 12. So 11.30 seconds. What if it had come out to be the 12.30 seconds? I would still reduce that to 3 eighths. Even though I asked for it to the nearest 30 second. 3 eighths is the nearest 30 second. It's just in a reduced or simplified form. That's not something that's going to be in the homework, but it's something I like to show you because depending on what area you're going on to after this, that's a big one. If you're going into architectural design or mechanical design, that is a big application, being able to get that nearest eighth or sixteenth or sixty-fourth of an inch. Um, going on to like a construction career, that again is a big application. If you're going into business, well then the decimals are preferable. Okay, well, in our next step, we're going to take a look at starting our operations with our decimals. Now remember, when we add any number, we must have the same name. That's why when we had something like 28 plus 41, we had to line it up. 28, 41 because I had to have ones with ones. I could only add ones to ones. And tens with tens, because I can only add things with the same name, right down to the digits. When we're dealing with decimals, like 0.74 plus 0.396, how do we make sure we're only combining digits with the same name? You've been told since you were in about third grade that when you add decimals, you have to line up the decimal points. And lining up that decimal point is how we keep, make sure that we're, we're keeping the place values lined up, that we're only combining things with the same name. Now here we should put a zero in there to fill in that place value that's missing. So now both of these are in thousands. And so we'll go ahead and add zero plus six is six. 4 plus 9, 13, so 3 carry the 1, just like with whole numbers we can carry. 1 and 7 is 8, plus 3 is 11, so 1, carry the 1. Now before we do this column, we need to make sure we bring down the decimal point. Bringing down that decimal point, make sure that this stays tenths and this stays ones. That when we add, we keep the same name, so that decimal point comes straight down. 1, 0, and 0 is 1. So we get 1.136. We might have 7.408 plus 13.97. So when we go to line this up, I always put my decimal point down in the second number first, and I work backwards from it. So 3, 1. Then go the other direction. I do have to fill in a zero down here to fill in that place. And now everything should be lined up. Eight plus zero is eight. No, zero plus seven is seven. Four plus nine, 13. So three, carry the one. Can I do one, seven, three? Not yet. What do I have to do? Drop my decimal. Bring down the decimal point. Now 173 is 11. So 1 carry the 1. And 1 and 1 makes 2. So 21.378. Any questions? Okay. What if I had 9 plus 0 0.043? How am I going to line that up? Nine, the decimal point is after the nine. If there is no decimal, if there is no decimal in the number, the decimal point is at the end. 
So now I put that there as 0 0.043. And of course, I'm going to have to fill in some missing decimals like that. So now 0 plus 3 is 3, 0 plus 4 is 4, 0 plus 0 is 0, bring down the decimal, and 9. So pretty easy to add ones like that. Subtraction. Something like this. Again, we're going to line up the decimal point, 8.74. Put my decimal point in, we got 5, 9, 3, 2. What do we have to do? Fill in the 0. And now we'll subtract. First, 0 minus 2 can't be done, so we have to borrow. This is a 3, and this is now a 10. 10 minus 2, 8. 3 minus 3, 0. 7 minus 9. We're going to borrow. Even though the decimal point's there, we can still borrow from the 8, just like always. That's now 17. 17 minus 9. 8. Just like with addition, we can't cross the decimal without bringing it down. 7 minus 5 is 2. So 2.808. So subtraction is really no different from addition. Except we can run into things like this. And that looks like a 7. As we said before, if there's no decimal in the number, it's at its end, right there. So this is 9 followed by a decimal point. So we're going to line up around that. So 2.6374. Of course, I'm going to have to fill in some missing zeros. And now I can subtract. 0 minus 4, of course, can't be done, so we need to borrow. But we go here, and there's nothing to borrow from. So what do we do? We have to keep going. There's nothing here, nothing here. We get all the way to the 9 before we find something we can borrow from. So the 9 becomes an 8, and this is now a 10. But we didn't need it here. We needed to get it all the way down here, so we have to keep borrowing. Borrowing from the 10, this is now a 9, and this one becomes a 10. We keep going, borrow from that, this is a 9, and this one's now a 10. Well, one more time, this is a 9, and now this one is a 10. And we have everything where we need it to be. So 10 minus 4 is 6. 9 minus 7, 2. 9 minus 3, 6. 9 minus 6, 3. As always, before we cross the decimal, we've got to bring it down. And 8 times minus 2 is 6. What do you think? Not terrible? Do this with. Of course, the nice thing about decimals is your calculators do decimals really well without any real special keys, right? Don't need an ABC key or fraction key or anything to do decimals. I want to see what you remember here. In your notes, try to take 0.298 to the nearest sixteenth of an inch for me. So 0.298 over 1 times 16 over 16. So 0.298 times 16 is 4.768, which is between 4 sixteenths and 5 sixteenths. Which one's it closer to? 5, so it's 5 sixteenths. How many of you had 5 sixteenths? Good deal. Okay, so our last thing we're going to do for today we're going to look at evaluating expressions. So if I have something like this, P equals 3.8D minus M. And I ask you to evaluate that formula for 
m equals 5.1 and d equals 2.6. I have to take the letters, just like I do when I have whole numbers, and replace them with the numbers they represent. So p is going to be 3.8 times d is 2.6, then minus m is 5.1. So the first thing I have to do with order of operations now is multiply 3.8 times 2.6, 9.88. So P equals 9.88 minus 5.1, and we can subtract. 9.8 minus 5.1 is 4.78. P equals 4.78. What do you think? Good stuff? Okay, so if I tell you that D equals 1.5 MP over V, and I ask you to evaluate D when... V equals 4.5, M equals 3.6, and P equals uh, 2.1. Give that a try in your notes. See what you come up with. Anybody get a value yet? What'd you get? 2.5, let's give it a shot. So 1.5 times 3.6 times 2.1 over 4.5. What's really tough here is keeping decimal points straight for multiplication. You notice I put the little x back in there just because of the decimal points. So 1.5 times 3.6 is 5.4, correct? Times 2.1 is... 11.34. So I've got 11.34 divided by 4.5, which is 2.52. Good. Any questions? So now, what if I go back to some of my geometric problems? And let's say that we have 3x minus 5 here, and this is 2x minus 21. Find each angle. So we always have... Three, one of three cases. Either they add up to make a certain total, they subtract to make a certain difference, or they're equal. Here, they're, are they equal? No. In this case, they add to make a certain total. Yeah, so 3x minus 5, which is this angle, adds to this angle, which is 2x minus 21, to get 180. Because this adds up to straight lines. That always is 180 degrees. They're supplementary. They make a straight line. So, yeah, the 180 is part of the geometry. Right. So now we got the 3x plus 2x is 5x. Negative 5 and negative 21? Negative 26. And then add 26. So I don't know where the 1 came from. So this is 5x equals 206, and then divide by 5. x equals 41.2. So now what? All done? Go home? Happy? we got to answer the question. We're asked to find the angles. I never actually wrote that down. Well, I did. Find each angle. So that is 41.2 is x, 
So this is 3 times 41.2 minus 5. So 3 times 41.2 is 123.6. Minus 5 is 118.6. So this one is 2 times 41.2 minus 21. 2 times 41.2 is 82.4 minus 21, 61.4. Now we should double check here. Do those add up to 180 still? Yes, they do. So here, find what this angle equals, the blue angle. Find that angle in your notes quick. So do they add to a total, subtract to a difference, or equal? Equal 5x minus 47 equals 3x plus 18. From there, what do we need to do? Subtract 3x. Gotta get rid of one of the x's. 3x is smaller, so we subtract it from each side. 2x minus 47 equals 18. And then add 47. 2x equals 65, and then divide by 2, x equals 32.5. Now we're asked to find this angle here, so 3 times 32.5 plus 18 is going to be 97.5 plus 18, which is 115.5 degrees. Obviously not drawn to scale. If I wanted to double check, I could do this one too. 5 times 32.5 minus 47. 5 times 32.5 is 162.5 minus 47, which is 115.5 degrees. We get the same on both. Okay, for one night, I think you guys have suffered enough. There is a new quiz. Do... Tomorrow, Wednesday, at 11.59 p.m. And then there's a new homework due for Thursday at class. Um, if you've checked your WITC email, you may have received a message saying that the course evaluations for this course are open. Um, if you haven't filled that out yet, that's fine. Um, I do want you to fill it out, but you'll get a chance on Thursday. This class has actually been selected to do a, what they call a focus group. So that means either my supervisor or somebody else will come in and they'll sit and observe the class. And then they'll actually talk to you. And if you, if you need to, they'll take you into the computer lab next door here. And they'll actually walk you through the process. Now in Richmond, I'm not sure what they'll do for that part. But I know uh, whoever comes in, I'll want to keep you guys on the network. Will they talk with you? They just want to observe the class, interact with the students. A lot of the times it's just an excuse for our people that are administration to get back in contact with the students again. So just so you know, if there's somebody strange in class on Thursday, that's all it is. Um, and please feel free to you know, tell them whatever. That's how I get information to improve too. So. Anyway, there it is. You guys have, if you want to go next door and work in the computer lab to get started on the quiz or finish up homework, feel free. Otherwise, we'll see you on Thursday.